Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Braden, and we're back with another Stay Plugged In program interview. And today I'm sitting down with the Lions Township Esports program and uh, their coach, Neely, and uh, one of their Valorant players, Xavier. Hello, I'm Coach Neely. Um, I am an English teacher at Lions Township High School, and I have been teaching here for 10 years. This is my 10th year, but it is my second official year as the, the head of the esports program and the esports coach. And then this is Xavier. One of my star players. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Xavier. I'm class of 2025, and I primarily do Valorant for esports. Awesome. What role do you play for Valorant? Um, I am. I switch off between controller and sentinel for the team. Okay. He's the team mental. I mean, when it comes <laughs> down to having like a good positive attitude, not getting upset, and not getting tilted, he's like the only person that like keeps people level. Absolutely, you got to have that foundation in the team. You know, yeah. any any stable team is going to need that. Um, so yeah, Xavier, let's let's jump into your kind of background and, and career in esports. Where did you start playing video games, and how did you get here? Yeah, so I guess I've always had like a hobby for video games ever since I was younger, and so coming into LT as a transfer student from a small private school and like downtown Chicago, I guess I never realized that playing video games could actually be somewhat more competitive. Um, so when coming in here and LT does the pick two for um, your clubs, I decided, hey, I like video games and this seems, I like a competitive like game set. So I figured why not try out on um, esports and i actually heard about esports from miss neely and uh, she was my english teacher for first year so that was very nice to hear hear from her point of view about how esports is and how the games run and how like fun it is for the kids so i figured why not try it out yeah, so Xavier's first year, so I was teaching him when he was in my class when he was a freshman. Um, and that was the year that I just helped out with esports. I wasn't the coach. I wasn't in charge of anything. Um, I had two other older brothers growing up who played games like Half-Life. They played Counter-Strike. So naturally, that was the thing for me to do. So I myself played a lot of like Half-Life, showing my age. Um, but as I got older, games like Valorant became interesting. I started playing them. Um, and so when I found out our team had a Valorant team or our school had a Valorant team, I was like, let me see how I can get involved. Uh, and then that was the year that I helped with the Valorant tryouts. I helped set it up because I had had some familiarity with the game. And I talked to my students pretty often about it. It was something very exciting. So I'd come to class and tell them how the game went. And Xavier told me that he was getting interested in the game and he had started playing. And I remember having conversations after school or after class being mm -hmm. like, He'd be like, oh, I'm going to try out Viper this weekend. And I'd be like, okay, let me know how it went. Um, and then that turned into, you started what rank in Valorant? I started Iron 3. And then he moved all the way up to Gold Plat on his own over the summer without any coaching, any help. And so I think he was able to see his own potential before he even got on the team. And once he became someone who was part of the team, that mindset of like I'm gonna learn and grow and like try to be good at this thing completely exploded and now he's one of our best players absolutely I love that story um just the grind as someone who's grinded from gold to, to like low diamond kudos it is not fun at all. especially I don't know if you're queuing solo I was queuing solo it's not fun um so that that's an awesome story um so you kind of mentioned that you also subbed for Overwatch. Uh, Valorant's your main game. Are there any other titles that you may have uh, scratched the surface on that you uh, want to compete in? Uh, I've vaguely tried CS because I figured I'm really good with AIM and Valorant. Why not try carrying it over to CS and see how I perform there? And so I've somewhat gotten into CS and now it, I'm at the point where I'm trying to learn the game sense part because the two main aspects of Valorant were aim and then game sense so I got the aim for CS now I got to learn the game sense 
I think my favorite thing about Xavier on the CS2 team is that he didn't want to try out. He flat out told me, like, I'm not trying out um, when you run tryouts, though. If you need someone to fill, I'm sure I could just fill. So during tryouts, we ended up needing someone to fill. Some kids didn't show up. I'm like, all right, Xavier, get in here. So he joins the lobby and then he like goes crazy. He gets an ace. And I'm like, I don't know if you really should just like let this go. I mean, I know you weren't trying to try out and I'm not going to put you on a team if you don't want to be on one. But can we please count that as a tryout? <laughs> and sure. he was like, yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I mean, the, the games go hand in hand. Counter-Strike obviously being the predecessor. But like you're saying, mm -hmm. it, it just translates and you just got to adapt to the game sense portion of it. Um, which I'm sure you'll pick up quickly on. So, Coach Neely, coming into the school, uh, you was esports around before you? How did you initially get involved? So, esports, I think, started to be like an official competitive group right around the year that COVID hit. So, the year before COVID, um, my predecessor, Mr. Navazny, had, uh, I think, gotten a grant for a lab of PCs. But anybody who knows anything about gaming PCs, those are now old. And so we have to kind of like upgrade our equipment here. But he was the person who laid the foundation um, for where our club is now, because prior to that, nothing really existed. I think there was really no space for a competitive esports, And so he opened that door for us. And I think the title he really did start with and made a lot of progress with was Overwatch. I mean, our, our team had done really, really well in the past with Overwatch in particular. So your background kind of fit that mold already and you just kind of slid into the position. Um, how's the team performed since your takeover and you know, what's your maybe future goals for the program? Um, I think we consistently either make, I think we always make it to playoffs for the most part um, with our Valorant team. I'm sure our CS team will do just as well. Overwatch, I don't remember last year if we made it to playoffs. I think, I think we were just short. I think we were just short, but I think for a team that, you know, has to play at home and isn't really playing with each other in a lab and in that space, um, they did really well. And I'm always really impressed with their performance. Um, it is very student run and very student led. I try to be hands off about how often they have to practice and how those are kind of dictated. Um, the kids get to decide when they practice for how long, who organizes it. Um, and I think that's kind of at the heart of what makes a good esports team is that it's not really delegated by me. It's it's their passion and their interest that kind of drives everything that they do. Um, going forward, it would be nice if we could get the equipment we need to have an in-person lab so the kids could play together because that that LAN atmosphere that I think a lot of us old timers like got to to learn with makes a really big difference when you're collaborating on how to play. Um, and I think it does keep the team mental a lot higher. Definitely. Yeah. And and so, Xavier, maybe speak to that a little bit. Have you been able to compete on LAN? I know IHSEA playoffs and finals were at LAN. Um, have you have you had that opportunity yet? And what was it like? Um, so I remember some Valorant players getting together and we were like, hey, I think it was Roosevelt did a LAN um, competition for Val. Anyone want to do this? I was like... Yes, for sure. I want to I wanna see how it is to play in LAN. So me and a couple other um, individuals decided we went to LAN, we did it. And honestly, the environment there compared to being just at home and on a screen was so much more like united. And I honestly felt like the, just being in a room together and having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with someone and being like, hey, this is what you did well. This is something you need to work on. Honestly improved how we performed as a team. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. And everyone jokes about like fist bumps on land, right? You know, but, the, but <laughs> until you're in that atmosphere, it you really clear. don't understand it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in my own like personal background, my husband and I both game. We play Valorant together all the time. So like we sit, I sit here, he sits there. And it does create a different dynamic to be able to like turn around and yes, fist bump, but also look someone in the eye and be like, what were you thinking? Yeah. It just comes off so differently when you can really look them in the eye and be like, come on, you knew better. Yeah, the adverse side of it. You know, you got to mm -hmm. see that too. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Um, so Xavier, let's jump into maybe your future, um, your junior, right? Class 2025. Yeah. Um, do you have any plans for college at the moment? Are you wanting to compete collegiately? What, what do you have? Um, so currently, I don't know what my options are for college. Um, obviously, if there was something 
where I could play at college, that would always, I would always like to look into that. But for right now, I want to see how high school goes. And I want to, I want to make sure that um, esports is the right direction for me. And if it is, fantastic. I get to look into more of my hobby and get to look into what I truly like to do. And that is play video games. Absolutely. Yeah. And you kind of hit the nail right on the head. You know, one foot in front of the other first. Let's finish high school and then figure out college. And of course, college is a, another four year experience. So plans may change. So make sure you have that carved out in front of you before or sorry, ahead of time. Um, I do want to touch on you mentioned Roosevelt University. Uh, the great program there. I'm not sure if you've spoken to the people there or not. I'm happy to connect you. Um, but they're a very, very accredited esports program. Um, and, the, and you were in downtown Chicago previously, like you just said, right? Um, yeah, I was more towards like the Midway area, like before I came to LT. But sure. yeah. Gotcha. Cool. And where is LT located, by the way? Uh, LaGrange. Okay. Illinois. Gotcha. Cool. So not too far. Um, no, not too far. Yeah. I mean, in terms of like college programs, we do have. Um, one of our former Overwatch players who now does play collegiately. And so he was, he has shared with um, the team some of his experiences. And one of the things that he said that I think was really valuable for them was that the stakes are so much higher, even if you're not playing on a scholarship, just being on the team, the stakes are so much higher. Like I'm a very relaxed coach, I would say. I don't really get upset if people are late. I don't really get mad if people, you know, can't make it. And he laid it out for them and like put a bullet point list of like at the collegiate level, it is completely different and you really have to turn it up. Um, And I think it was really beneficial for our players to hear because I think a lot of them see this as a hobby slash thing that they can do after school. And although they know it's an opportunity for the future, I think once you're in that setting, it's completely different from what you would have expected it to be. Absolutely. Yeah. And that, that's kind of our main goal at Stay Plugged In, especially this year. Um, we're wanting to, you know, incentivize esports at, at the collegiate level, obviously. Um, but at the forefront of it, you're going to be a student athlete. And so that's going to in- include having good grades as well as participating in any team activities, being responsible, making sure that you're, you know, a model student for one, the school, but also your program, because what you post on anything is going to reflect that. So it's, it's a, it's a huge learning curve for a lot of students. And I'm, I'm happy you're kind of jumping ahead of that and, and making sure that that um, message is, is relayed. What's maybe one piece of advice from a leadership role uh, that you could give to a uh, up and coming high school freshman that's interested in esports? I think the one thing that I would say is to just get started. Um, I think it can be really discouraging to to be 14, especially if you're maybe not already a really skilled player. Just start because by playing with other people and by playing with other people consistently, you will get better. Your teammates will give you feedback. A lot of the things that you maybe struggle with are things that you will develop and adapt to. Um, and if anything, that accountability of your teammates is going to make you a better player regardless. Solo queuing anything is just you against yourself against whatever single match that was. Um, but when you have a consistent team that can look at your performance and say, okay, this is the space where you consistently need to grow. And this is where you're consistently helping us as a team grow. I think that changes the dynamic. And I think any player who is even remotely interested, no matter what your skill level is, you should just start. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'd, I'd also say like getting started is also a big thing, but I also think that like being able to grow is another thing. Cause I know coming from a captain on the Valorant JV, I make sure that the people who are there know their mistakes and understand how to fix them because it's one thing to acknowledge that you have made a mistake and it's another thing to learn what to do after Mm -hmm. so i make sure that the people on my team know their mistakes but i also know my own mistakes at the same time so just being in a group setting so where we can help each other to solve those mistakes i think is honestly one thing that i would say to a future yeah schooler. yeah no that's a huge leadership quality to have is just to be coachable um and also recognize an opportunity to coach someone 
Um, I think that's a the strong characteristic to to carry on in life in general, but also in game as well. That's where that like his mental it's almost always there, and I think he's such a good role model for his team because of it. It's kind of like a joke among us that like he doesn't really get upset, but the kids know like he genuinely does not get upset over the game, and it is something that helps ground I think the group when it's needed. Yeah, Got to keep the ice in the veins at all times, right? <laughs> Awesome. Well, hey, we're going to close out this interview. Uh, last qu- a couple questions. Uh, where can people find your program? Um, is there any social media links, stream links that you guys have going on at the moment? Um, so currently you can look on ohs.net and under the student profiling, if you go to the clubs, you can find esports under there. And then once after that, if you do come and try out and you make it, we do have a Discord that um, all of the players can come into. That's awesome. Yeah. We do technically have a Twitch, but we have not updated it in a while. Um, I think because of our current like lab setup situation, it ends up being like, hey, whose computer at home can handle it best? And so um, we've kind of let that sit by the wayside for now. Yeah, no, hopefully uh, in, in what you were speaking to, things kind of change in that direction. You can kind of get a more developed program, go or not program, sorry, space going. Mm -hmm. um xavier last question vandal or phantom and then (laughs) what skins are you rocking on those and what's your go-to knife i think i'm really good with headshots so i gotta go vandal um but i know recently i've been using phantom so i got i gotta love both at the same time situational Um, yeah um i really like oni oni phantom it's just such a good skin um and then I think they made a new skin for the Vandal that I really, really enjoy. The finisher on it is amazing. Um, and then I've always used the Champions 2022 knife for gotcha. go-to. So The like skeleton knife from CS, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm an Oni Phantom guy as well. Um, <laughs> the Vandal I just found was the uh, Mage Punk. That was in my store the other day. I like that one a lot. It's a real nice one. Awesome. Well, it was super nice meeting you guys. Again, thank you so much for taking the time. 